yeah, I think everybody can, everyone can hear me? Yeah. 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 And we're live. Okay, let me just start with prayer. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity for us to come study your word and fellowship together. We bless you. We give you all the glory. We just pray that, you know, we just pray for your presence to just help us in our midst as we study. And, you know, we get things from it that will help help our life, help our understanding of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So here we are. We're doing... The same topic and the same thing, all music, no noise, focusing on the Gospels. Um, quick, I guess, quick question. Anyone get a chance to read any book in the Gospel this last two weeks? That would be off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go on. Which one? What did you read? Uh, Mark. Um, the Gospel of Mark. Okay. And I was okay. like, I took, far, I took, I didn't get far. Did because okay. <laughs> something came up, but um, I think I got to just <laughs> chapter one, end of chapter one or two, one of those. Okay. But I took well, the notes on what, the side. Did anything stand out to you? Yeah, I mean, a few things did, um, and also for, based on what we discussed, I was able to like help. It was able to help um, me understand the context of like what is happening because obviously we talked about how um, the Gospel of Mark was also written. It wasn't just, um, it was, was it Simon Peter who was speaking to, I forgot his name, someone, <laughs> I can't remember, hey, what's his name? But it's a recounting his, um, what his what he has experienced and encountered when Jesus was around. Um, and I just noted like a few stuff, like um, something I found interesting was those of it where uh, when jesus was baptized um for some reason i've always read it or remember me reading it as like they saw the heavens open up but in mark i believe it says um it was jesus who saw the heaven open up something like that um mm -hmm. and that was just interesting to me and then also the 40 days when he fasted you know the completion we talked about the numerology yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah, just stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, that's that's cool. That's good. Anyone else? So I listened to a bit of Mark. Okay. Um. Yeah, I didn't get to read it, but I think a few things stood out for me. Um. One, it felt like well, more you, like you listen to it in the Bible app kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it was technically the same. That was, I'll give it the same, the same thing, technically, almost. Okay, go on, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I think maybe if I read it, I'll probably pick up on different things. But I think it felt a lot like it was miracle after miracle, being like, this is the son of man, this is the son of man. So it was like, oh, just quite obvious for me as well that, oh, yeah, one of the point of this is to see that and to show that Jesus is the son of man or the son of God. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. You are, in that point, you can see like the the focus of why the, the you know the author wrote it is kind of very mm -hmm. evident. But yeah, Mark is very like boom, 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 straight yeah. to the point and a lot of things. So. Yeah, it is. And also the response of like um, I'm gonna say people versus like humans versus demons. <laughs> so yeah. the demons, right. whenever he came, like Jesus was going to cast them out or something, they would be like, oh, Jesus, leave us alone. We know you're the son of God. Like, yeah. leave us alone. And the humans would be like, yeah, leave us alone. We don't know who you are. We don't want to find out. Just leave us alone. <laughs> like, yeah. go away from our place. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think if you keep reading further, you see like, even his disciples are in the same, are doing the same thing. So the humans mm -hmm. are doubting, even those closest to him are yeah. doubting that. And mm -hmm. then there's like a turning point and then the story changes a little bit and focuses towards the end. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's an interesting one. Um, we'll, 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 uh, sorry, were you about to say something? Oh no, sorry, go on. I have quite a few yeah, stuff we'll, that on the side, but yeah, go on. Oh, you've written a few, things. no, go on. It's quite, okay, I can, maybe I'll, I'll, can I read through like what I basically pointed out? So, for example, yeah. I said, so from the first chapter, things I noted was like, from they referenced to Micah, where I was talking about the anticipated, anticipated messenger of God and the Holy Spirit. I just found that, you know, interesting, especially coming from um, 
Peter's account that he mentioned that Micah specifically for his audience. But anyway, um, and then the description of what the Judd and the Baptist looked like, for example, that fascinated me. And mention of the Holy Spirit was actually, I don't know if this was when the Holy Spirit was first mentioned, but I noted it. Um, Jesus, oh yeah, I said that. Um, driven by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness. Um, I said it could yeah. be Mark's choice of words, just because I found it <laughs> the way it's like driven. Like that word driven, it, I don't know if the translation was something there, but it just, it sounded yeah. very like, oh, you, you're driven to go and do this. But anyway, mm. um, and then yeah. I said, um, Jesus in the wilderness tempted by Satan. I've put in brackets not to be tempted by Satan, but just this is just from Mark's Gospels. It, um, it's like, oh, it's like he, he went to the wilderness not for the purpose of being tempted, but in, as a result, he just happened to be tempted. That's just something that I wrote it down. Um, yeah. Jesus was ministered but by angels. I looked at the word what ministered mean because I got a bit confused. Um, it was using that blue letter Bible thing. Um, it said, yeah, right. yeah, daikaneo or something to be attendant, wait upon, and all that stuff. I just wanted to understand it. Uh, um, mention of angels, and I said, interestingly, omission of the details of Jesus' temptation in Mark, it didn't really talk much about it. It doesn't go into detail, it just like. It's very quick. Like how I many? Like two, three lines, three lines, four lines. Doesn't yeah, spend a lot much. of time in that, does it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then I just noted also like the message of Jesus was like repent and believe in the gospel, um, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Um, and mm. then yeah, just things like that. A, a lot of people don't always notice that because that's very always repeated a lot. Mm. That's mm. like a key part of his message. But a lot of people usually well the people always think like his message is come believe in me so that you go to heaven mm. but his mm. message is over and over is repent the kingdom of god is is at hand I, I i think like the first one of the first few uh verses in mark that's how it starts mm -hmm. essentially the first sentence in mark is is essentially here is the here is the son of god and here you know mm. this is his message but yeah that's good. So you haven't gone too deep into it yet. So you're still no, at the edges, which is good. So hopefully some of the stuff that we'll do today will, will help you as you read further along. And then, uh, so I think next uh, next time we get the opportunity, we'll probably kind of compare uh, the structures of all of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and kind of see the the, the places where they... Where they are, you know, where they are, uh, well, how they are different, and then where people expect, expect, um, you know, where you think Mark is, Matthew is copying from Mark, or Matthew and Mark are, say the same story but are different. So you know, the things to to always look out for are where, so where to, where two gospels give the same story, is very important, and when, when one other gospel eliminates something from a story. That's also important to understand why they've done that. So, um, oh, so sorry, I'm struggling with hay fever a little bit today. So, so don't don't mind me. <laughs> okay. So, all right, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, I yeah, that's 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 good. I'm really I'm really happy you guys like when to read the books and it's quite it's quite good that's why we do this i guess uh yeah, yeah hopefully i go along <laughs> huh? it's no because i you know because last Mark. week I, I i i kind of i put the emphasis on on mark so i think um, that's probably yeah. why i was yeah. like subconsciously like sending <laughs> messages to your brain read mark, read mark. <laughs> I would have been if you came back and said you read John. I would have been surprised. That would have been so. Last <laughs> week I put in a full big thing on Mark. So, right, okay, which is which is which is cool. So before we go to structure, I, I, I so I would have liked us to go start with the structure of Mark and Matthew today. But I think it's actually important that we understand some of the characters that we're going to read when we start reading Mark and when we start reading Matthew and all these other people and uh, like. One of the things that's like let, let's let me just give uh, context for this. Like, if you are, let's say you you bring somebody from, let's say you write a story now, 
and then you bring somebody from the past from 2000 years ago to read your story so let's say you write a story about england and you write a story about the queen or the king or whoever they will find it weird when you talk about a king that has no power or a queen that has no power mm. you know that's unique to our world and the time and place that we live in like you know people 2000 years ago those mon those monarchs ruled with absolute power so if you go and have a conversation with somebody from the past and tell them about the queen that that just waves and wears a <laughs> crown and ceremoniously uh doesn't do she doesn't do anything right she can't well, charity ceremony yeah. like you said yeah but not so she has no control over anything people. that kind of needs explanation for some people like what mm. is the point of that because those other places the king the, the some areas the kings were head of the art military you know lead them into battle and stuff like that so it's, those are very important important roles and now we just have monarchies that don't actually even have any power to do anything so it's quite a weird thing so for for example so for us when we read the bible we get we see characters that just pop up that don't mean anything to us but they mean something to let's say people who you know the people the original well the let's say original audience who the author was thinking about right in, in those people those names mean something to them so for us like you just read the gospels and you hear about pharisees and sadducees who are these people well why do they have conflicts what's the conflict that they have with jesus what's that about uh herod why does herod want to kill kill a baby sweet baby jesus why do you want to kill sweet baby jesus right and those, those sort of questions. Like, for example, let me ask, do you guys know how many Herods are mentioned in the Bible? I thought it was one. Huh? <laughs> I thought it was one. <laughs> well, no, there's more than one Herod in the Bible, but they're all named Herod, so you cannot, you, you don't, you're you not able to tell the difference, but there's more than one Herod mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, because Herod was, so, a, was a title given when they became... Um, emperor or king or whatever it is. Yeah, it's kind kind of yes. Yeah. yes. They, so it's my name. name. It's an adopted name when you become the monarch. Oh. Yeah, so they they are from this line, but we will kind of so you understand. So, but they they have different motives. So we we kind of like see uh, uh, that. So okay, what are we gonna do today? So this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about the Hasmoneans, I'll explain that. We're going to talk about the Herodians. We're going to talk about Pharisees, Sadducees. These are some of the characters that we see in, in the Bible. And then we're going to talk about the stats. Uh, we're going to talk about how Matthew starts his gospel. And all this will fit, all this will fit in uh, when it will all make sense to you once we get through it. So today is going to be a lot of long uh, storytelling and talking. So just stop me at any point. And I'm not a very good storyteller, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Buckle okay. up. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay, everybody got any questions, any thoughts, anything they want to say? <laughs> no, all good. No. Nope. Oh, good. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, so, okay, we're gonna start. With a weird thing we're just going to do a whistle stop tour of the bible and we are going to what i want to do is just to explain i want to put a context for how we get some of the people that we get and maybe once i'll build a bit of context to to them and then you'll be able to see who they are what their motives are and you'll be able to understand the tension that they have with jesus right so okay. when you go read the stories again and you see the tensions each of these parties have with Jesus, it will just make sense to you. All right? It will not be like, oh, okay, these uh, people, they, are, they have reasons for why they exist. So, okay, first thing, we're just going to do a whistle stop tour through the Bible and then we'll, we'll, we'll um, most of it I'll be telling you stuff you already know, then we'll get to some really interesting parts. So again, the story story of Bible, well, 
the story of Bible that fits into the context of what I'm talking about. You know, God uh, God picks a man called Abraham after a lot of things have gone wrong. Picks a man mm -hmm. called Abraham. So in Genesis, we kind of see, get the story of his family, right? His family that yeah. goes through the line, Isaac, and then Joseph. Joseph gets them into Egypt. In Egypt, mm -hmm. they become slaves. Then after many years, uh, Moses comes along, gets, you know, God calls Moses, you know, reveals himself to Moses, born in bush, that whole story. And Moses leads his people out of, out of Egypt. So we get the period in the Bible where we read about Moses in the wilderness. God gives them the law and the people are wandering in the wilderness for how long was the journey? Remember how we ended last um, session? How long was the journey meant to last? Remember how we ended last session? I can't when we talked about numerology, how many, yeah. how long was the journey? How how long was the journey meant to last? I can't remember what you mean. What's huh? the number for completion? Oh, what's the number for completion? Forty. Exactly. No. How so? The journey was meant to last forty days. Oh, yeah. But the, the journey was meant to last forty days, but the journey lasted forty years. Forty years. All right. So they have that whole period in the wilderness. Then they come into the promised land. So you read all about that in, in the book of Joshua, all the, the conquests they get through uh, that. Okay. Was it 11 so days then, the journey was supposed to be? Sorry? I thought it was 11 days the journey was meant to be. I think it's 40. I might be wrong, actually. I might be the one who's wrong, actually. But anyways. Uh, we can check. So it. we get to them settled on the promised land and... They have, uh, you, we get the era of the judges, right? So all the tribes live on their own and they have judges. And you get, it's kind of like a, the book is just a cycle of judges. Um, pretty much the same story told in a different uh, context every time. So you have, um, uh, you know, you know some of those judges, Deborah, um, Samson, Gideon, you know, those, those guys. Then it comes all the way to Samuel. We, we get into the book of Samuel. Samuel is kind of like the last George prophet kind of figure. The, mm -hmm. the people of, the, 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 all the people have been asking for a king because Israel mm -hmm. is a small country surrounded by big, big nations like the, the Assyrians, the, the, the Egypt is there. So a lot in the Bible, you hear, you hear the Israelites always, you know, some figure or someone always going, to to the to uh to Israel uh, to Egypt for help right so they they want a king to be like the other king so they they, they keep asking God for a king God doesn't want them to have a king but later God says okay go ahead so that takes us into them casting lot and Saul becomes king right uh Saul is not really king of the whole uh tribe uh, of all of israel at the beginning he's only king of some of the tribes and then you know you know the stall and david story saul and his son jonathan die in battle saul's son ishbosheth takes over um there's kind of like a, david becomes king of judah there's kind of like and uh his son is king of the rest there's kind of like a civil war but david takes over and becomes king of the unified Israel. So he's the first unified king of Israel. Now David's line now becomes the royal line, right? Leading uh, the people. So we get Solomon who comes after. So Solomon is, we, he's kind of known for being wise, but Solomon is actually a terrible king. A great king, but terrible king because Solomon in the book, at the end of Deuteronomy, before they get going to the promised land, Moses gives a speech. And he actually gives a list of things that, of things, uh, laws, if Israel ever has a king. Don't have a king. Don't ever ask for a king. But if you ever have a king, the king should abide by these rules. If you read the story of Solomon in in Book of Kings, it's like if Solomon just took a checklist of just ticking off everything that Moses says he shouldn't do. He just did every, all those things. And then he, he becomes more like a pharaoh than the king of, of Israel. And he's... Uh, you know, institutes a lot of terrible ideas, including a bit of slavery. So, because of that, uh, 
the, the Israel is split into two. So David's line continue become uh, they become they stay on as kings of Judah, while the northern part continues as Israel, and they have a separate separate uh, uh, line for their kings. All right. Okay. So later down, the Assyrian Empire comes conquers conquers uh, the northern tribes, and then later Babylon comes and takes uh, you know. When they conquer the northern tribe, there's a lot of exiles that that go that that go down to Judah. I, I I shouldn't mention the capital of Judah is Jerusalem at this point, and the capital of Israel is Samaria. You guys, does his name Samaria? Does the name Samaria ring any bell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does any character from there in the Bible? Samaritan. There you go. Okay, so Samaria is, is 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 from the north. Now the the Assyrians basically lay waste to that place. A lot of the people are taken away into exile. Some of them escape as uh, refugees and go to live in Judah. The Babylonians come. They they do the same thing. They take over a lot of people from from the from Judah into exile as well. However, the Persians take the Persian Empire comes and conquers the Babylonian Empire and then allows the Israelites after a while or the Jewish people to go back to their land. So a lot of them are now go back to the area in Judea and all that part. And then the, North, the, 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 the northern lands, all those tribes are kind of lost or they've intermarried with, with people of other tribes. So, yeah. You read a bit of that in uh, Nehemiah, Ezra. So they come back and they rebuild their temple. Or I, I, I should mention, obviously, Solomon built the, the temple. And they rebuild their temple. Now, this is kind of where our Bibles, the Bible kind of stops. So the Bible that we we read, we kind of, kind of stops around this period. Right? But obviously, life keeps going on. And there's still more uh, history in the making. So the Persian Empire doesn't go on for too long, and Alexander the Great. You remember now you will start. We'll start hearing figures that are outside of the Bible and in history. Alexander the Great takes over and conquers most of the world, and that, so that Alexander obviously he dies a young man, right? And when he dies, one of his generals. Uh, Seleucus takes over, and that leads to this uh, Seleucid era. So these people now, uh, you know, they now run the empire, and his his generation now takes over as becoming sort of the head of the empire. So this introduces the Greek Hellenistic period. So now this this era, one of the goals of Alexander the Great was to make sure that the whole world spoke Greek, at least the world he had captured spoke Greek, lived the Greek, Greek, kind, Greek kind of life, high Greek culture. That's what was his aim. And some of the generals kind of enforced that as well. So this is how we get the by. This is why by the time Jesus talk, turns up, people are speaking Greek. Right? This is why the New Testament is written in Greek. This is why the Old Testament, one of the biggest translations of the Old Testament is the Septuagint, which is, you know, the Greek translation of the Old Testament. So this is, you know, Greek culture, Greek life is kind of exported and enforced around the world. However, this, the Israelites, they want to, some of the Israelites, uh, especially those of the priestly class, they kind of adopt, they kind of try to assimilate into the Greek life, but some of them, a lot of the Jewish people refuse. They are the people of God. We are meant to be set apart. You understand? So they refuse and they they hold on to their traditions and or to their religion. Some of the you know the rulers or emperors now realize no, these people we are, we are going to stamp out any religion that is not ours. Right? So they. They ban a lot of the Jewish practices. So we're talking circumcision is banned, offering uh, sacrifices to God is banned, going to temple, all those things banned. And to even make it worse, one of the rulers, uh, a man named Antiochus, decides that 
the, the all the Jewish people should go out and sacrifice a pig on their altar to God. Now you know the history of Israel of Jewish people and pigs. Pigs are not, you know, it's a no no. It's not kosher. They don't eat pigs. They don't have any dealings with pigs. This guy knows that, of course. So he says, go out to your altars at the temples that you've built for God and go on there and sacrifice a pig to the God, to the God Zeus. So they have ceremonies in different towns where they get the people out to go and do this. At that ceremony, this is a part of the now, this is a part of a Bible. Uh, this is a book in the Bible that's not in a lot of the Protestant or uh, it's not a lot of the Protestant Bible, but I think you get it in the Catholic Bible or maybe some of the Jewish or the Hebrew Bible. So it's the book, there's a book, the first and second book of Maccabees. So if you look at the Catholic Bible, you'll see those those books in there. So that tells you story of the, the Maccabean revolt. I, I've called it Hasmonean revolt here, but I'll explain. So the Maccabees, during this day, one of the guys who is a priest, Matthias and his sons, they are, they are from the priestly line. They see this and like, no, nah, we are not having this. You're not sacrificing uh, a pig on the altar of our God. So they come out and they, they, they start a revolt. Right, they start fighting the the Greeks and you know all that stuff. That leads to a whole war. But one of the things that at this point the Greek, uh, the you know the Greek Empire is kind of weak. They are facing revolt on different ends, so they are not able to stamp all of them out. So the the Maccabees are kind of very successful. So their family name is actually Hasmonea. Because uh, Maccabees is like a, 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 a nickname for the eldest son, who is called Judas Judas Maccabees, because you know he's he's very tough in battle. So Maccabees means hammer, so it's like a hammer in battle. So the, those guys uh, they they win the war in the short term and in the long term uh, war, and they're able to expand the territory of Judea a bit as well. So. During this period, they then institute what we call the Hasmonean dynasty. These guys now take over and become the kings of uh, become the kings of Israel. Right? You guys following the story so far? Okay. Yeah. So they become the kings of Israel. Now these guys are also from the priestly line. Remember, the guy who starts the revolt is actually a priest. So they are also from the priestly line. If you remember clearly. Um, the priests are from are from the tribe of Levi. I think that's an important detail I missed from the Moses. All the tribes were given land. We've talked about this before in when we talked about wealth. All the tribes were given land for farming and all those sort of things. But the tribe of Levi weren't given any land. They were given only land for their for their pasture. So they had communal lands for their pasture. Now, the from the tri tribe of Levi. The inside there, they have uh, Aaron is from the tribe of Levi. Aaron is Moses' brother. Aaron and his line will become priests, right? So these guys are from that line. So these guys decide they are the chief, they are the chief priest and, 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 and all that. So now we have a merging of the, the priest and the kings are all merged under one, one family or under one person. So you, the, the ruler was a priest and a king at the same time. But after a while, they split those duties up. But the Hasmoneans, even though they were Jewish people, and these are Jewish people running things, the Hasmoneans were not necessarily better or nicer than the the Greeks who were ruling, right? They were, their era wasn't very, necessarily nice for the people. Okay, now, one of the things that happens in this era is that a lot of is a lot of Judea, a lot of Israel had assimilated to Greek culture, and when they come to this Hasmonean period, they want to kind of separate themselves because the Greek culture started infiltrating their religion. As I talked about, even the Bible was even the Hebrew Bible was translated to 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 Greek, so Greek life, the language they spoke. So this is what happens. This is why all of us speak English, right? Because the traditional language is from where we come from. It's not English, right? But we speak English because of the British Empire. And the Bibles mm -hmm. that we read is English because of the British Empire. So 
this is the same thing that happened with them. Even the Bibles that were originally written in their own language was now translated to Greek because most people actually spoke Greek. All right, so they, they are influenced. I love this Greek life and Greek culture, Greek religion has influenced their, their life. Okay, all right. Now, what what are you guys following me so far? Yeah. It's a bit bit long. But what happens here is that, so now they have this period where they need to try and set themselves apart again. We need to be set apart. We need to divide ourselves up from all the Greek uh, Helleniz Hellenization that's happened to our, to our, you know, our culture. So we'll come back to that. But what happens is that between, between this dynasty, they start having factions that all want to rule many years down the line. They start having factions that all want to rule. So they start fighting each other. One of the one of the leaders of the faction, he has a general who is not from from the line of is not from this uh fam, from this family. This, this is very key. He has a general that is not from this Hasmonean dynasty. Right? He that general gets his son to marry into the Hasmonean dynasty. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Now, who's a who's sorry? Sorry. Go who's on. a gen Who's a general? He's from Greek. I'll, oh, he's no, just a general. He's a, he, yeah. He's general who is who is Jewish as well, right? Okay. He was not from this family. That general who is that general is the head of his army, not from this family. That general marries into the family, and when when that. Uh, guy from the Hasmonean faction dies, that general takes over, he takes over that the head of that faction. And then his son takes over when he when the father dies. All right. Now while all this is going on, the Roman Empire is coming into is is, is creeping up on all of them. And Rome takes over and conquers uh Rome takes over and conquers uh, uh, all of Judea and a lot of the world that they knew. Just to, just to pause, the sacrifice, the, the day the revolt started, when they were asked to sacrifice pigs and they started the revolt and, you know, killed people. That's what the Jewish people celebrate as Hanukkah. If you've ever heard about Hanukkah, Jewish mm -hmm. celebration not too far before Christmas. Right. That okay. is what they celebrate. That is what they are celebrating. They are commemorating that that uh, revolt. Oh wow! It's very big in their, in, in their Jewish culture. So, okay. So Question. the uh, Roman Empire comes into place now. The Romans. Question. They just is, want to collect. Sorry. Rome and Greece are different, right? So the Romans and the Greeks are not the same. They are not the same. Okay. But the Romans are speaking Greek because of the Greek. Empire. Okay. Right? It's just like uh, the British Empire is not ruling the world now. Let's say America, USA has the most influence, but they speak English anyways. Mm. Right? So it's mm -hmm. kind of similar to that. Mm. Uh, so the, Rome, the Romans come into place and they take over. Right? They, they, and when, but when they take over, they install the Hasmoneans to continue ruling. Right. in their place. So you rule and, you know, we don't want to cause trouble. We just want to take money, tax people, and we don't want to revolt and all of that thing. Just you rule. We don't care what God you worship. We don't give a damn about any of that stuff. Just keep doing Just, you know, they install the Hasmoneans. But, remember the general son I talked about? That general son is a big, big kiss ass. And he goes and gets into that, um, bed with all a lot of the Romans. So he comes with a Roman army and slaughters the rest of the Hasmoneans. Mm. He kills all every single living Hasmonean available. Now, this general son, remember, this general son is not from the Hasmonean mm. dynasty, but his wife mm. is. He mm. comes and slaughters every, every single Hasmonean Every single person from the Hasmonean dynasty, he slaughters all of them. Kids, uh, you know, whatever your age, he kills all of them. 
Can you guess the name of this man? Herod. That's Herod. That makes so, sense. All right. Now, the, the first Herod at the birth of Jesus. Two things. So now, the, because with the Roman power and Roman might behind him, he's now installed as king of the Jews. Right? Okay. Right. Now, this is where the story starts getting uh, interesting. He's now installed as king of the Jews. But he's not from the Harmonian dynasty. Right? And he's not from the house of David. Right. So he's not from these two parts. Now, there's so also another wonder. tradition that... Huh? I was just going to know one that he didn't really like... He wanted to kill the Jews' okay. babies or something. Hmm. So here's the thing, right? So look at how many, you can see all the... So we've talked about the Assyrian Empire. We've talked about the Babylonian, the Persian, the Greek, the Roman. Now, during this period where there's... Uh, during this uh, period after the death of... Uh, David, a strong tradition of a Messiah builds up about the Messiah who will come back, become king of, of Israel and kick out all these, um, you know, get rid of all these, uh, you know, evil in the land, get rid of all these uh, different kings and empires that have come to destroy Israel. That tradition builds up, right? That's Messiah. That's the that's the way a lot of Israelites saw the Messiah as somebody who's going to be king uh, that will come back, restore you know, restore Israel to his rightful place, kick out all the, the evil, line kick of out David. all this. Yeah, and that king will go come of come from the line of David. They saw this person as an actual person who will be king from the house of David. So mm. you have Herod, who is king of the Jews. He's not Hasmonean, and he's not from the house of David. So he is sitting on a place where he's very uh what's the word I'll use? He's very uh he's he's very um, conscious of his position, right? Mm. He's very conscious of his position. Yeah, he's not secure in it. Yeah, he's not secure in his position. So any form of threat, any form of threat, if there's a Hasmonean somewhere, he's going to kill the person. If there's someone from the house of David that is a threat to his throne, all these people are threats. Because the people will, will easily, you know, if somebody comes out the, from, from the house of David, they will easily, you know, lays claim to the, the throne. Mm -hmm. It might be easy for the people to assimilate to that person because again, Herod is a puppet for Rome as well. So Herod is not from the people, and Herod mm -hmm. is known to be brutal. Even the even the the king of uh, even the king of uh, sorry, even the emperor of Rome noted how brutal Herod was because Herod killed his wife and his own son. Oh wow. His wife is Hasmonean, remember? Uh, and his son has Hasmonean blood. <laughs> Do you understand? So Herod killed his son and his wife okay. because you understand. Like, you know, you know, and he goes about doing all sorts of things to please Rome and everything. So when Jesus comes on the scene. And those three mm -hmm. wise men turn up to Herod. That's why that is a in the story. They first yeah. go to Herod asking for directions to go see the, this king and this star mm -hmm. of David or that has been born. Her so to us, that is like, oh, okay, that's the story. So people reading it, they're going, oh no, oh mm -hmm. no. You understand? Because this is who Herod is. Mm -hmm. So Herod then goes about, I, you know, when these people don't come back to to him. He starts getting very anxious and he needs to find this baby. And that's how he goes on a killing rampage, according to the Bible. Wow. Okay. All right. Really? So, yeah. So, when you read that part of the Bible, you probably just understand why Herod is making doing those, doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. I, I need to take a sip. <laughs> Storytelling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. 
All right. So now, let's go to. Let's just do another bit. So okay, this is kind of like the family tree for the Maccabees, but so okay, just just a few things just to talk about the Mac a little bit on the Maccabees. So the head of the Maccabees uh, dynasty, where it starts from, is Matthias, who was uh, was a chief priest as well. This line, this was a line of of uh, priests that were. So what the the Romans were doing that they were also. Uh, I mean, sorry. What the Greeks were doing is that they were also appointing the high priest to the to the Jewish temple, but the high priest would serve essentially was serving Rome, uh, serving serving the the Greeks rather than the people. Mm. Anyways, all those things get abolished and moved to the side, and these guys continue. Anyways, Matthias, he this is one of those deri derivatives of the name Matthew. So you know when people become popular. Uh, versions of their name starts seeping into tradition. Mm -hmm. So the reason why in the Bible we hear about Matthew and we hear about another disciple called Mat Matthias. Because this name, Matthias, head of the, the guy that leads the Maccabean vault, is popular. And th that's how the, why we have a we have two Judas in Jesus as the Jesus' disciples. There are two of them called Jude, Judas. Right, one of Jesus's brother or cousin is called Jude, Judas. So that is a derivative of one of the right. heads of the of the you know Maccabean family called Judah, the first son. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's also Simon there again. The name Simon has become more popular as well. All right, cool. So let's go back to let's go back to Herod. So this is uh, uh, Herod. He he marries into this uh, Maccabean family, right? And uh, that's his uh, his father, uh, Antipata okay. the Idumean. Okay. So he gives birth to Herod. Herod marries into this family and uh, has children and all that. Okay. Now, let's go to more interesting one. Now, this is the Herod at Jesus's birth. But this is not the Herod. So by the time Jesus' ministry, ministry is in full flow, mm. this Herod is dead. He's dead at that point. Okay. Right. So now uh, what happens is that Herod, the, the, the area which Herod is king of, he gets split between his children. Right. Right. So one of the areas, one of the areas is, is, is uh, headed by this lady called Salome. Uh, then there's Herod Antipas, Herod Achilleus, and then Philip, holding one of the regions. All right. Now, this is this is this is this is the juicy part of the story. So, <laughs> one of the Herod's kids, who is not who doesn't hold who doesn't control the territory, called Herod the mm Second. -hmm. He marries his niece. He he marries <laughs> his niece. Called Herodias. 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 So Her Herodias. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, Herod yeah. the Second marries Herodias. Herodias divorces Herod the Second. Remember, Herodias is his niece, right? Yeah. His sister's yeah. daughter. Yeah. Herodias divorces Herod the Second, and Herodias marries Herod Antipas. Oh <gasps> wait. What? That's what okay, John was talking out about why he got killed. Exactly. This is this is this is what this is what God John the Baptist killed. Mm. Wait, what? I didn't what? understand it. It seemed like this makes sense. Herod Wait, the what? second. Yes. Herod the second married his niece called Herodias. Yes. yes. His niece, his sister's child, called yes. Herodias. Herod the second, one of Herod's kids. One of the right. first Herod's kids, Herod the Great. Right. So let's Herod the Great, the first yeah. Herod where Jesus is born. Yeah. Herod the Great has a son called Herod the Second. Herod okay. the Second marries his sister's uh, daughter, daughter called Herodias. Right. Herodias, so he's married to Herod the Second. Mm. I, I guess mm. that thing wasn't that uncommon, but hey, into okay. the Herodias divorces Herod the Second. Right. And marries his brother, Herod Antipas. Right, I'm with you. Okay, got you. 
<laughs> right? Okay. Herod Antipas, they they killed John the Baptist because John the Baptist was against all whatever these people were were doing here. And especially the marriage. Right. Yeah. Okay. John the Baptist was John the Baptist was you know, John the Baptist, firebrand preacher and 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 you yeah, know. Yeah. John the Baptist stood day in day out speaking up against this and mm. what they were doing. This whole so you know you've probably seen the story of Herodias requesting the 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 head of John the Baptist and all. Yeah. So this yeah. this is this is why Herod Antipas puts him in jail because he speaks up against this, right? Mm. And this is kind of like a prophetic uh, John the Baptist kind of seeing himself in the prophetic light, speaking, uh, you know, speaking uh, up against the evils that the leaders were doing, right? Mm. Which you see a lot in the Old Testament, and all of the prophets in the Old Testament get, uh, you know, they get they get uh, killed or attacked for it. So this is the reason why uh, uh, Herod Antipas uh, kills John the Baptist. This Herod Antipas is the Herod at the tri at the when Jesus is crucified and all that. The Herod you read about is this Herod Antipas. Okay. okay. So now we're rolling with Antipas. Right. Okay. Right. right. So the infighting between all these Herods, the infighting between all these Herods gets room to to uh, kind of take take power away from them and okay. bring it consolidated to some. So this um, uh, one of Herod's uh, children marries uh, marries a Roman, right? And then has a kids. One of the kids kind of grew, grows up in Rome. That is uh, Herod Agrippa. So when you read the book of Acts and you see a Herod there, that's this Herod, Herod Agrippa, different Herod. Herod Agrippa has a son who's gone up in Rome and everything, and he's just referred to as Agrippa. So when you read later in the book of Acts, you hear Agrippa, who is there at the trial of Paul. That's, that's, uh, uh, yeah. That's Agrippa is from this is the son of Herod Agrippa, who is connected to all these heroes at Herod the Great. My goodness, the naming system is terrible. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> all right. Makes sense. Though. So yes, the the big Bible characters, the Bible uh, authors. I guess they don't really they are not really caring for that detail, and those, the story is <laughs> not about them. So they just write Herod. That's what they refer the people referred to there as. So mm. when you read and you 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 understand like Herod the Great, he's under threat because he's not secure in his in his position and he's a very you know he just he has come into power with a lot of violence, killing his own people to consolidate mm. power. Um, these these heralds here, they are all joking. The, the kingdom has been separated, has been broken up for all of them. But all, they are all fighting to to grab, or, you know, to grab each other's territory. Mm. Rome doesn't want any fighting. Rome just wants you just obey Roman order, mm. keep quiet. So, so Rome were brutal, right? right. They had uh, what we call. Uh, 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 Pax, Pax Roman, right? It's a uh, Pax Roma, Roman peace. So, one of the okay, this is actually something we, we can talk about this later because our, our word in English that we call peace, peace is actually cultural. I think because we are now English, because of our the influence of English, we have a different understanding of peace. But peace is actually a cultural thing, in a sense. And I, I explain for it because peace to the Jews means something different than peace to Romans. Do you understand okay. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Peace to the Jews was shalom, right? What we translate as peace is shalom. Is, mm -hmm. um, is, is, a, is a situation where, you know, uh, the kingdom of God is 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 in control right, right. that's that's peace 
to, to draw. People, you know, the, the world described in some of the law, even read some of the laws in Exodus and, and Leviticus and Deuteronomy, the kind of world those laws are trying to push forward is like a world people can eat, there is no fighting, the widows are taken care of, all those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. People worship Yahweh, that world, that's peace. But what the Romans want is shut up, pay your taxes, we do whatever we ask you to do, no fighting, and that's peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. The absence, so from here, the absence of, of conflicts then becomes peace. But that's not peace. Right, right. To the, mm. to the Jewish people, that is not peace, right? Okay. Just, it's just an absence of conflict. So there are some other cultures that had their own way they defined peace. And sometimes it was a very religious sense of it. Sometimes it, it isn't. So, you know, peace is not an absence of conflict. It's just the way we look at it in our modern way. I think it's a defeatist way of looking at peace because, yes, it, I think so because... It's deeper than that? We live, in, we live in terrible conditions and we just take it like we live in peace, but we don't live in peace. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, mm -hmm. you know. I get you. you. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of... Um, uh, how we get so just shut up do your do your thing uh do sacrifice at the temple and, mm -hmm. and, and basically shut up really <laughs> don't make That's noise <laughs> don't make any noise okay any questions you guys for me any questions anything that you need yeah. answers to or anything so who's salome she's not um Related to Herod the Great, is she? No, she 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 is um she is um. Who is she again? <laughs> the daughter, no? She, yeah, she's one of the daughters. Oh, okay, okay, of okay, okay. Because okay. I think I've heard that name before, but the, no, you've heard a different. You've you've heard the name of oh. a different Salome. Oh right. So there's a there's a Mary Salome in. In the New Testament, that's a totally different person. Okay, got you. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. You guys, uh, all everything here, Claire? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. good. Interesting cool. to hear the storyline and the context behind it, though. That's just different. Yeah. Mind blown. Yeah. yeah. So you can see why they want they don't want Jesus around again. Mm -hmm. You can see why the uh, Herod oh, yeah, doesn't definitely. want Jesus around. And you can see why the older Herods don't want Jesus around as well. Because Jesus yeah, now, now this is the important thing. Jesus goes to the temple. You read that story in all four gospels, and he causes trouble. Yeah. If you cause mm -hmm. trouble, you're gonna get the Romans to come in here and they might take control from us. Right. and install their own people to, to rule the land with force because they want peace. Worship whatever God you worship. We don't really care. Do whatever you do. We're not like the Greeks to enforce our, worshiping our gods and we don't care. As long as the, you know we, you do what we tell you to do and you shut up, that's what we care about. Go on. So would the Romans have then been um, helping the... I guess these are the Herodians people. So, like, would they have been having their soldiers, like, or do they have their own soldiers, the Herodians, like the Herods? And so the Herodians are using Roman soldiers because uh, Herod the Great gets how he comes to power is by getting in bed with uh, the Romans okay, and doing whatever sense. the Romans. I think he even okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, important thing I needed to I need to mention. Mm. Herod the Great rebuilds the temple. So one of the things he does is that he goes into a lot of um. He builds a lot of things. I think he builds a city in in out in in homage to Caesar called Caesarea. I hope I'm not getting oh, that Caesarea. correct. Um, incorrect. Might be wrong on, but I think he does that off the top of my okay. head. Um, he builds a lot of things. So the temple that Jesus refers to in the Bible is not the temple that Solomon built. It's the temple that Herod built. The temple that Herod that Solomon built has been destroyed, and then, yeah. and then remember, as I said, um, during this period when they returned from exile, they come back to rebuild the temple. 
but that temple is destroyed again by the by the uh by in the hellenistic era and with the greeks so herod the great then returns when Her during herod the great time he takes in a lot of um uh projects and one of those things is building the temple <laughs> so the temple so now if you go to jerusalem now the outer wall of the temple that Herod built is still standing. So when you go there, and you've, if you've heard of the Wailing Wall or you know the wall where people go and they, they put they touch the wall and pray, that wall was part of the temple that uh, part of the wall of the temple that Herod actually right. built. Uh, okay. Right. Sorry. So, so Herod temple was, is, he went, he built the temple for what reason? If he's not a Jew. No, he's a Jew. Oh, he's a Jew. Hey. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a, he's a Jewish person, but he's he he gets his power. His power is being is come from his alliance with the Romans. Ah, okay. This is making sense. So that's how he comes to power with because of his alliance with the Romans. So he's a Jew. But yeah, thank he's you. A Jewish I, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So yeah, I hope I haven't missed anything else out. But that's how it is. Okay, we're gonna go back again. So as I said, this era here is very important era. Mm -hmm. So before I just go to the next set of people, you guys, uh, any questions, anything? So I think I missed, I might have missed um, the bit where you were talking about the Hasmoneans, like how they came to... So that's, that's when I talk about the Maccabean revolt. So the family name is Hasmonea. So you hear more about the Hasmonean dynasty. So the the Maccabees, mm -hmm. um, the guys that that kick, the guys that um, stopped the sacrifice of pigs in at the mm -hmm. altar of of the synagogue and the temple, mm -hmm. were from the Hasmonean family. Okay. okay. And the nickname for one of the sons there was Maccabees, which kind of okay. took on the name. That's why you have the book of Maccabees. So okay. the Hasmoneans then start ruling. And mm -hmm. is yeah, is the factions and the fight between them that mm -hmm. kind of gives rise to Herod. So this is kind of like they have mm -hmm. their own um, line of people, yeah. and then yeah. Herod Herod's uh, father is a general. To mm -hmm. which one? I think he's, he's the he's a general. I'm not sure which one of these guys is the uh, mm -hmm. general too, but. Okay. He arranges a marriage with with Marianne All right. for his son, Herod the Great. So when mm. that general dies, I think it's Aristobulus, when he dies, when he dies and uh and his general takes over the faction of the Hasmonean dynasty that he was taking. These guys are all fighting each other because they want to have sole mm -hmm. control. When he Good. dies. His son, so he, when he, he dies, his, his general takes over, but his general is not from the family. And then when that general dies, his son, Herod the Great, takes over. Okay, got you. So that's how we get what we get. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things. Herod is not from the Hasmonean family. Mm -hmm. He's not from the Hasmonean family, and he's not from mm -hmm. the house of David. Mm -hmm. So he has mm -hmm. two different lines of people to be worried about that can yeah. lay claim to the, right, the that makes sense. Yes, pretty much. Okay. All right. Cool. Now we'll go back to the next set of people. <clears throat> so we're, we're going to talk about... So, okay, we'll kind of explain King of the Jews. King next set of people we're going to talk about is the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Oh, yes. Our favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so... When you read when you read the Bible, you're gonna see a lot of of the Pharisees and Sadducees in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, who were so, they? <laughs> who are they? Exactly. Good mm -hmm. question. Okay. So during this period, so again we'll go back to this period. During this period, remember what I said. During this period. Greek culture and Greek religion and way of life has kind of influenced people a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And they yeah. are trying to force Greek culture, Greek religion, Greek everything on people. And that's the way it happens when an empire takes over, right? They force everything down your throat. Again, that's why we're all speaking English right now, because of the British Empire. And, and it, okay, another thing, the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church is a church that was, is part of a faction created by um, Henry VIII breaking out of the Catholic Church, right? Because they refused to mm -hmm. give him a, a, let him divorce his wife. So again, mm -hmm. loads of people around the world are Anglicans for that re for, and yeah. for that reason. One okay. person, yeah. Because of this one thing created and has been pushed down to every town people should. So that's it. So during that period, uh, you know, during this era, their, their way of life and their way of their culture is kind of, uh, you know, being forced down everybody's throat. When they do come out of it, there's now a whole thing. A lot of the books have been, some of the books are still there, some of the books are lost, and there's now a whole... There's now a whole talk about how to, about how to, what, what will you call it? How do we go back to, we want to go back to being the chosen ones, the set apart people again, right? There are some people that want that. They want to return back to being the set apart people, the people who are, you know, living different from all the other people, right? We are set about what sets us apart, the, the laws of Moses, Right? right, keeping to these laws, the purity laws, the dietary laws, all those things that's what sets us apart. We want to return to that mm -hmm. now. So, this this is a faction, these people are the Pharisees, right? Okay, so let me okay. The Pharisees they're the ultra, they were ultra religious, they want to go back to this um way of, of life. Now the actual name is called the actual name is Haburim, which means like comrades, brotherhood. It's like a brotherhood of people. Uh, Pharisees is the name people call them. I can't exactly remember what Pharisees actually means. Let me see if I can. Okay. Find them. Find what it means. Yes. Okay, I, I can't find the original meaning of the word Pharisees, but these these are the the what these people did, right? They they wanted essentially this is it. This is it. Make Israel great again. That's right. those are the people. The Pharisees. There's kind of like that's their own thing. The make Israel ah. great again people. Okay. Ultra religious. Now they have their not only do they right. they have their they have their own interpretation of the laws of Moses as well. So what they've done, they actually developed an oral tradition, which they said had been going on. So they documented an oral tradition about the interpretation of the laws of Moses, which is was down, then written down during that period called in something called the Mishnah. So you can still get uh, access to the Mishnah today, right? Uh, some of the writings in the Mishnah. Anyway. So... They are again ultra religious. They want it back to every, let's go back to our Jewish rules. Let's abandon everything that is Greek. Let's you know push all those things aside and go back to who we are. People that are set apart because they believe that a reason why a lot of the bad things that has also happened to them, why God is not on their side, is because they've abandoned all these things that set them apart, that made them the holy people. You understand? Right? Yeah. So these yeah. guys, they they are ultra religious. They believe in miracles. They believe in the resurrection. You know those sort of things. Sounds familiar. Right. The Sadducees, on the other side, these are people that they've kind of accepted. Uh, we don't really, you know, um, they are not that religious. They are not that focused on religion like that. They are not <laughs> that. They are not that concerned. They are. They, these were the people who. Um, once the Greeks came, they easily assimilated into that way of life for their own, what, for whatever reasons, for their own survival or whatever. So they've taken on that way of life and they're happy with it. 
they mix they can mix Greek philosophy with Jewish philosophy is all good to them. Okay. So they don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in miracles. They are not as they are not very you know they believe only in the literal interpretation of the laws of Moses. Oh. Now, here's the problem with this. Here's the problem. The Sadducees are the elites in the land. But the Sadducees are also the chief priests and the high priests. So when you're reading about chief priests and high priests, they are the Sadducees. Sorry, did you ask the question? You're talking about the Sadducees. You answered already. It's okay. Okay. So the Sadducees are the chief priests and the high priests. They are the elites, you know, the aristocrats of the land. <sighs> they don't really... They don't care that much about... They are just... You know, religion is all right. It's more for your moral development, blah, blah, blah. They are in bed with, with <laughs> whoever comes in. The, is the Romans coming? Yep, we'll deal with them. With the Greeks coming? Yeah, we'll deal with them. We, we'll, 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 you know, we'll do business with, with whoever. While the other guys like, no, we have to be set apart. We have to go back to our, our Jewish roots. We have to, you know, follow the laws of purity and uh, dietary laws and all the laws of Moses. Not only that, we have our own interpretation of these laws. Now, here's the problem. The Pharisees, well, the Sadducees are like, so the Sadducees, they don't believe in miracles, they don't believe in resurrection, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. The, the Pharisees, though, even though they believe all these things, like, they don't just believe it for themselves. They want everybody to live like that. Mm. You guys following me? It sounds very, very familiar. Right. Yeah. Say that right. again. So it's not just... So while they believe what they believe, they don't only believe that they should take part in what they believe. They believe that all, they should enforce other people to take part in it as well. And who is this? The Pharisees? The Pharisees. I see. All right. Now, okay. The problem, the other problem with the Pharisees is that their own interpretation of the law is, is can be problematic. And they take things a little bit too far in their own interpretation of the law. Right? So, I think that's, that kind of sets both of them apart. Now, these two parts are kind of part of the ruling. So the Sadducees are the higher, the you know upper class people. Everybody there is like priestly line, chief priest, all those kind of you know high class, wealthy people. The Pharisees are more middle class, middle to upper class ish. Right mm -hmm. now, inside the temple. Um, they have a thing called, they have a, a ruling class called the Sanhedrin Council. So the Sanhedrin Council has 71 members, and the high priest is the head of the Sanhedrin Council. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to read about this council in the Bible. So the high priest, whoever is chief priest or high priest, that person is head of Sanhedrin Council. And that's kind of like, that person is kind of like, uh, what's the word? They're like a judge? Oh, no. Uh, like the high court official. No? Oh. So that person is like the, so, okay. Here's the thing. Remember, um, if we go back, let's just see if I can explain this a little bit better. Well, so the from this period, from mm -hmm. this period and when they go into the promised land, the laws of um, Moses are the laws that govern the land, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, the laws in Leviticus, Exodus, those are the laws that these people used to govern the land. But these laws yeah. have kind of, there's no such thing as religion at this point. Like, mm -hmm. if you're Jewish, you worship the Jewish God, and if you're Greek, you worship the Greek God, you understand? But mm -hmm. the laws, the laws that govern the land have come from a religious context. If you see what I mean, mm -hmm. and the temple is central is is at the center of this. So the chief priest and the high priest they kind of have a very um, big role in the 
in like the way people live. So their concern of of, of things, you know, if you see all the, all those laws in, in, involve the finance and the land and how everything is managed and this and that. So the the chief priest and the high priest, they, they, this kind of puts them in an important position. So they kind of, by the time we get to the time of Jesus, and this is another explanation that we need to talk about the temple on its own. The temple is not just a religious place. The temple is also a place of commerce, a place of finance, and then mm-hmm. we have the religious element. So the chief priest is sitting on top of this. So the chief priest is kind of above, in charge of the laws, the finance, the, you understand? So you, you kind of have a, a judge element to it. You kind of have the head of the monetary system there to an extent. Not, not uh, there's an influence in it, or let's say banking system a little bit, and then, you know, economic mm-hmm. system, let's say economic system. So mm-hmm. the chief priest has a very, very big role to play, right? Within this class of mm-hmm. Pharisees and Sadducees, there's now 71 of them. 71 of them are part of the Sanhedrin Council. These are the people who are ruling you know, they sit down to decide everything. These are the people who sat down to have a trial for Jesus. Essentially, is it like a government? Like the government now and today in Britain? Essentially, but let's put it like this. The current government today, but the queen has power. All right, got you. Right? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's, so let's say, no, actually, let's put it like this. Let's go back to the British Empire. Okay. Let's use the British Empire. Let's say uh, the British Empire, the Queen or the King of England is in charge. Mm. They send a... So, okay, let me use actually... Let me use uh, Nigeria, for example, back in the day. Mm. We had like a prime minister who was in, ch- in charge of a lot of things. Mm. They sent a governor general from Britain Mm. who also had some form of power. Mm. And then there was, you know, there was all the different tribes had their own kings and queens who had some form of power. Mm. And then there's um, there's um, the king or the queen sitting in England also dictating things. So that's mm. kind of the structure. Herod has ultimate power over everything, but the chief priest also has power. Then there's Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate is, is the Roman general assigned to this region. Okay. So will you say then? Yes, so go on. Sorry. So we say that. So it's Pontius, Herod, or whatever his family, and then the mm-hmm. the well, Sanhedrin. Yeah. No, that's the thing. No. So oh. all let's put it like this. So let me let me do a a different thing. Okay. So is so let me Herod say involved in Jewish custom like arguments, no? If that was a uh, conflict, uh, you would defer to the high priest. Mm, okay, I, I get what you you actually say, Interesan. Yeah. So I think so it's they like, had had powers, but over different things. things. Maybe. Right. Okay. Maybe. Uh, Let's see. Let's see what he does. Okay. So mm-hmm. there's the emperor in Rome. Mm. There's Herod. Mm. There's a high priest. Mm. And Pontius Pilate is kind of like they're sitting here. Oh, now, okay. Here's the thing. It should be like this. <laughs> it should be like this. Uh, right? Uh, that's what I thought. This is how it should be. But it's, it wasn't like this when Jesus was on that trial. Right. This is how the structure is, essentially. Mm-hmm. So the thing is that these these two separate these two sides kind of had connection with Rome, because mm-hmm. Rome appointed the high priest as well. So here's the thing: by the time Jesus comes is on the scene, there's so many. The, the, this is a it's a there's a bigger discussion on on this. So, but so you remember um, the Levites? So you remember we talked about the Levites being the tribe that didn't get any land. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Everybody's meant to bring their tithe to the temple. And this is how the Levites from here will use, they will use to eat 
maintain the mm. temple, take care of the widows and the orphans and all those sort of things, right? Mm. But, and obviously they also had all the ceremonial activities they have to do inside the temple. However, by the time these people now become corrupt, 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 by the time we get to Jesus, they were also imposing taxes on people. Mm. So they were imposing temple tax on people. They were okay. everything good thing that you're meant to. So there are a lot of religious activities people are meant to take part in, right? You have your child. Eight days later, you go to the temple and dedicate your mm. child and give offering. Mm -hmm. the, high, the priest is meant to take care of these activities. But the priest will tell you, okay, you've given birth to a child. You want to dedicate your child. Uh, you know, pay a thousand pounds, something like that. You understand, mm -hmm. right? So stuff like that. Now, you when you get to the money changes that Jesus is um, kicking out of the temple, and when you know that whole incident, these people are there because, you know, when you come to give money in the temple, you have to use Jewish currency, not a Roman one. The whole mm -hmm. world. Is, is is Roman land. You have to change your money. So, say, let, let's... Yeah, you have to change your money to buy things within the temple or stuff like that. So, let's say we have Passover. Jews from all around the world come to celebrate Passover. They all come to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they come, you're meant to, they come with their things for different sacrifices and different offerings that they want to give. Mm -hmm. On different festivals, they have different offerings and festivals and different things that you come to the temple to do. Mm. Now, obviously, you, you know, for different offerings, there's different sort of animal that you need to sacrifice. Mm. You're not going to carry a goat or sheep or whatever <laughs> it is that you need to sacrifice. Let's say you live in, in Ethiopia and you have to go up to Jerusalem. You're not going to carry, you know, goats and sheep all the way there. So when you get to Jerusalem, you buy it there. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you get to Jerusalem, the price is ten. You know, if the goat is four yeah. hundred pounds in yeah. Jerusalem, they'll sell it to you at a thousand pounds. This profit is going towards the high priest. Okay. If if doll if if I say okay, let's say dollar, you get um, one dollar gives you one pound fifty, right? When you get to the temple, one dollar will give you fifty. Let's say one dollar will give you twenty p. That kind of way. Mm. You understand? So That's the way they were operating. So they were doing so many things like this, kind of oppressing the people. They were also they've also imposed tax on the people. And mm. they were in bed with, with Rome. So some of the tax Rome was also helping them collect the tax from the people. Okay. So this is why they are sitting on the same level as Herod. Herod is doing his own beats with Rome, oppressing the people. The high priest is doing his own beats with Rome, oppressing the people. Okay. Now Got it. Pontius Pilate is meant to be the liaison with Rome. He's meant to oversee everything. Mm -hmm. And Pontius Pilate doesn't involve, you're not meant to involve yourself in religion. They don't really involve themselves in religious matters. So just you guys deal with that yourself. However, Pontius Pilate was very brutal. Pontius Pilate was a very brutal man. And he almost caused the revolt. Rome doesn't want that. Okay. Right. So, Pontius Pilate now has to behave himself. If not, these two can go to the emperor and get Pontius Pilate either killed or removed. Well, removed <laughs> in one way or another. Either okay. reassigned or killed. Okay. So, by the time okay. we come to Jesus, instead of Pontius Pilate to have power over the high priests, Pontius Pilate doesn't. Mm. So when you when when you get to those parts again, you will see hints of it in the conversation between these people and Pontius Pilate. While Pontius Pilate should be giving them orders and telling them, no, you mm. go do this. There's a there's a different conversation had there because there's an incident that happened, a, 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 you know, a revolt that was almost rising that Pontius Pilate, um, the Romans had to bring soldiers in to put down. That was caused because of Pontius Pilate's brutality. Mm. Right? So, mm. there's all these tensions happening. Okay, that's, we didn't really plan that, but okay. 
So those are the, the, the high priests, those are the Sadducees. So the, the, um, the, the Pharisees on the ultra religious side, they want to go back to the way Israel was. They want to institute Israelite law and they also have their own interpretation of the laws and they want to enforce it on everybody. But as you can see, they cannot, they cannot enforce it on the upper class people. They want to enforce it on the poor people as well. <laughs> Now, the, Pope, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are part of the ruling class who are getting benefits from Rome. And they are then putting pressure on the people at the bottom. The people at the bottom, mm -hmm. they are paying taxes to Rome, they are paying taxes to the temple, they are being oppressed. So mm -hmm. one, uh, one of the historians called Josephus, I think he estimates that 40% of everybody's earnings was going towards paying some form of tax. So just think mm. about it now. Just think about how much you earn now. Think about if 40% is taken out of it. <laughs> you understand? It. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, I'm bad. <laughs> yeah. it. These, people, these people were not earning a lot. They were not earning a lot. 40% of their earnings mm. was going towards... Uh, the, now, there's more corrupt stuff that these people were doing. The The... the do you remember how you have to give him? We've talked about the economic thing where after a few years, after a certain point, you have to give people back their land. Yeah. Right? Yes. Back to the family. The 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 so what they did was was different because now they the temple through the high priest and thing, they were le now lending people money. So they are now part of the economic system. Right, uh, so I lend you money to be able to keep your farm going. I lend you money to keep your house going. Then, when you cannot pay, you default on your loan. I take your house. I take your your land. But here's wow. the thing: I'm not taking it. The temple is taking it. But the law doesn't oh. really say the temple has to return the land to you. Sneaky. <laughs> Do you wow. see? So there's different sorts of oppression ways that they're using to put down and oppress the people. So the people are sense. being pushed on. Many end. So the people are not really concerned about being religious, but they want to. They want, they want God. They they still want to have that relationship with their God, right? Yeah, yeah. You understand? They still want to. They're doing it in the wrong way. way. Yeah, they're trying okay. their best, right? They still want to have yeah. that relationship with God, yeah. but you know, they they, they still yeah. need to to chill. So. Yeah. Okay, so here's here's the thing I, I want us to, to just do now before we get to the next side. Who, so which one of these groups has a problem with Jesus healing people on the Sabbath? Pharisees. 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 Okay, Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Which one of these people has a problem what do you think Jesus? What does what do you think Jesus does that the Sadducees don't want him around? Let's forget the temple side of things first. Mm. So the Sadducees, from their point of view, they don't really care whatever Jesus is doing, but Jesus <laughs> starts doing something that brings him to their attention. Mm. Starts calling mm -hmm. himself king. Mm -hmm. Sorry, he calls himself king. They don't really care about that. Son of God. They don't care whether he calls himself king or he that calls himself care? son of God. Oh, they don't God. care. The Pharisees care about that. They don't okay. care. But he's saying miracles? They don't... There's miracles? Exactly. <laughs> Jesus, they don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in resurrection. Jesus ah. now starts talking about Jesus starts doing miracles. <laughs> Not only is people talking about his miracles, people are now talking about he's not he. This man, everybody's talking about his miracles, right? Mm. And then mm. he starts talking about resurrecting. <laughs> oh, we can't have that. Wow. wow. We can't we can't have that. This man is not resurrected. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's not. You understand? He's not yeah. resurrecting so, people. <laughs> yeah. So this is why the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Put aside their differences. <laughs> wow. To go after Jesus. 
That's funny, isn't it? The enemy of my enemy. He's my friend. <laughs> yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So, yeah. so both sides are fighting like a, a culture war within with the people, right? So they have yeah. people on one side who are like, you know, the kind of what we have now in, in our world is like people who are right wing yeah. and people who are left very liberal and conservative and both yeah. people are fighting a culture war and everything becomes people on this mm. side and people on that side in every single thing. That's what these people are. Yeah. So Jesus is part of that. But the problem is Jesus becomes a unifying thing for both sides. Mm. So, um, just a quick question. Yes. So with the Sadducees, you said that they don't, they didn't really care that much. So then, why, why did they, uh, for just the fact that Jesus said he was going to die and come back to resurrect, did they start caring? Because like... so here's the thing, right? Jesus had the people on his side, right? Jesus had been able to governize. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we don't really think about is that that story at the the story of Jesus at the temple is in the Bible is not I told think. as a miracle. Mm. It's not told as a miracle. The Bible doesn't really record it as a miracle. But mm. it has mm -hmm. if it's not a miracle, mm. then we have to look deeper at it. Because mm. the temple is a very, very, very big building. I can't remember how many. So the temple is like uh okay. Oh, I don't want to get the dimensions wrong, but the temple is, I, I heard someone say like uh, 10 football fields. Mm. I hope I haven't got that wrong. But let's say at least the football field size. Let's say mm -mm. at least. Mm -mm -mm. But, right, the temple is massive. Mm. Jesus goes in there and in the Gospels, he says he doesn't let anybody in or out of the temple. How is Jesus able to do that? So right. it's either you do a miracle. People right? with you, 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 exactly. Is either you do a miracle or you have so many people with you that together you guys shut down the temple. Jeez. Those are the only two ways you can do that. Now, other people have gone to do protests and revolts in the temple and they got killed. <laughs> right? Jesus goes in there, oh, kicks out the money changers. Mm -hmm. now, he kicks out the money changers who are bringing money for the for the establishment, right? He disrupts yeah, business, the goods and the... shuts down the temple, and then he leaves. Nothing happens. He's not arrested. He's not killed. Mm. Jesus does that on the... So Jesus does that at the beginning of the week. By Friday, <laughs> he's hanging on the cross. Uh, 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 really? What? So yep. would you say it's because of the fact that he went to the temple then? That's what accelerated. That's what accelerated. That's... Um, so if he had not gone yeah, to the so... temple, then he wouldn't have died. They oh, no, probably have found a way to get rid of him later, but that yeah. temple thing accelerated things. Damn. They were already plotting yeah. to kill him, right? But this yeah. kind of basically like, okay, okay, this yeah. guy, yeah. This, this guy is a problem. No. Now. Yeah. <laughs> So, got to go. in, in the Bible, when you read the stories again, you will see like the urgency of things. Yeah, they call an impromptu meeting of the Sanhedrin Council. The Sanhedrin Council meets in the temple, but they met in the ha house of the high priest. Uh... They don't run. They don't do trials at night. Jesus's trial. One of the gospel records Jesus's trial as being at night. Night. Wow, they really do. so they wouldn't have been they able to this. get every member of the Sanhedrin Council there. So they probably wouldn't have been able to get every member of the Sanhedrin Council there. But they meet at night, and within not too long, they've they've uh, done. They've come up with the decision that he should uh, he should be put Oof. to death. But wow. they don't have power to put him to death. Oh yeah, that's a question. Have I have. To... I have that question. So like, yeah, so this like is what where, is that? This about? is where pilot. This is where pilot comes in. No, but, pilot has the power to put somebody to death. But my question, sorry to cut, is why did they let? Because that they, 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 why is it that Judas had to 
be the one to i never understood the whole betraying um okay. aspect of it so let's 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 look at it again so jesus goes so this this is the story if we we'll read um from john i, I think john, i don't know which one of the gospel so here's this, this sequence jesus goes to jerusalem okay right and everybody's singing Hosanna, Hosanna. You know that whole story. Yeah. Jesus goes into Jerusalem, rising on a donkey. Everybody's singing Hosanna. Yeah. He goes into the temple. He looks around. He goes back. On his way back to where he's staying in Bethany, he sees a fig tree that doesn't have fruit. He curses the fig tree. Mm. No, no, sorry. That's that. He does, that's not the day he sees the fig tree. This fig tree is the mm -hmm. next day. So he goes to the temple after the, everyone shouts and says, Hosanna. So Hosanna means um, save us. So they are basically saying, our Savior, come save us. Okay. So they are recognizing him as the Messiah that is going to save them, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So he goes to the temple. He looks around, see what's, what's going on. He leaves. The <laughs> next day he gets up on his way to Jerusalem, on the way to the temple. He sees the fig tree and curses the fig tree. Mm -hmm. What? He goes into the temple, and that's where things got real. Uh, so that's where he kicks the tables over, kicks the money changes out, shuts down the temple, and all that. Okay. Now, remember, look, remember the tensions I've give you, given you. They don't want to cause a riot. Reli when religious activities, remember the Maccabean revolt, it happened around religious activities, right? These people don't want to cause a riot. There's a history of the Jewish people revolting during or starting riots during religious festivities. Rome doesn't want this. So everybody is on, on, on TP toes. Jesus going to disrupt things at this point in time at the temple is a problem, number one. So he goes into the temple, does all that. Nobody, nobody can arrest him because he's with people. That's what we can glean from the situation. He's around people now. We need to find a time where we can arrest him when he's not among the people. Right. Okay. Who, who, who is going to know how we can arrest him? Because Jesus is showing his face. But if we show, if we want to arrest Jesus, the people singing Messiah, Messiah, save us. Those are not, the, that's those, it's not in front of those people you want to arrest Jesus. You understand? Mm -hmm. You want to arrest Jesus when he's in his quiet place, when he's praying, he's alone yeah. with only his inner circle. That's when you want to arrest Jesus. Who uh, can give you that access? One of Jesus. Somebody on the inside. Yeah. That's where Judas is. Oh, okay. Hey, thank you for explaining. That makes sense now. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it looks... So, if you don't understand the context, it seems weird. Why does Judas... The guy is moving about. Why can't we just pick him up? No, yeah. you need someone. So, when you read the story, Jesus is praying in the garden of Gethsemane <laughs> and and uh with uh he he asked um uh paul james and john to pray as well and you know peter. that's where all those things happen peter, no. yeah, i say paul peter, <laughs> peter. so yeah that makes sense oh yeah yeah definitely hey okay yes so that kind of like i hope that kind of explains so when you read and you see the tension that is uh, developing between the people and the, Jesus and the Pharisees, you understand, okay, a lot of the tensions happen around very religious things. Jesus healing on the, on the Sabbath day. These guys believe in miracles, but just don't do it on the Sabbath. <laughs> and other guys don't believe in miracles. So other guys do don't believe all. in miracles. So don't do it at all. So, <laughs> you see. Yeah. So Jesus is not for business. He's right? touching my money. That's it. Last show. <laughs> I have a question. And, go on. Sorry. About the tax collectors. Where do they fit in? Yeah, because, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Tax collectors are very interesting as well. So, yeah. oh, the, so yeah. collect the, the Romans, again, remember, Roman peace. Romans, the, Rome wants peace more than anything. Mm. So what they do is that they get Jewish people to collect tax from Jewish people. So the same way they've got Jewish people ruling their land, 
they've also got Jewish people collecting the tax for Rome from Jewish people. So what they do, or what they kind of do is that, let's say, um, uh, let me use, okay, let's say Oxford Road. All the people on Oxford Road need to pay tax. So what they'll do is everybody on Oxford Road needs to pay 100 pounds in tax. Tax collectors come in, they'll go to Rome, and they'll pay the tax for everybody on Oxford Road. The head of the tax collector will go pay the tax for everybody on Oxford Road, right? Mm -hmm. Then they go on Oxford Road with the with the power of Rome behind them. They go on Oxford Road and like, okay, I've paid the tax, but you don't know. I've paid the tax hundred pounds, but I collect hundred and twenty pounds or hundred and fifty pounds from you. <gasps> Snake. So that's where they get their wealth, right? So they 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 have the thing to collect all the tax from Oxford Road, but. Mm -hmm they put their own um, gain or profit on top of that. Again. So that's why people hated them, because they were working <laughs> in Rome against their own people and also mm. profiting of... They are profiting of the exploitation of their people. Mm. Mm. Okay. Right. Matthew so, but here's the thing. Sorry? Matthew, wasn't he a tax collector? Matthew was oh, a tax yeah. collector. Yeah. Wow. Full circle. Yeah. So the thing is that there are different levels of tax collectors. <laughs> there's levels. <laughs> yes, All there's right. levels. So the another tax collector mentioned in the Bible in the Bible is um Zacchaeus. Remember the story of Zacchaeus? <gasps> yeah. Okay. Zacchaeus, so there's a tax collector. He little man. The yes, man. exactly. So <laughs> yeah. there's a tax collector who is directly connected to Rome. Oh, right. Right. The guy right. who goes to Rome to do the business that I'm going to collect the tax call the, the tax for <laughs> Oxford Road kind of thing. That there's that guy. So that guy is at the top. But he has his boys who work for him who will go to the houses and the farmlands to actual actually collect those tax. Mm. So those are the two people working. Those are all tax collectors, but in two different levels. You understand? Yeah, yeah. But those boys are gonna add like their own amount to it as well, no? They could, they could exactly, they could as well. So not to stop them, but they they're gonna get paid by their boss. But they could add their own uh, uh, tax to it as well. Extra fifty p. Exactly. So you make some money too while taking tax for your boss. Mm. So that's why they are hated. Because you know you're taking you're taking my money, so I mean yeah. the way we pay tax now, I mean apart from for obviously those who are employed, you, the tax is taken before you even get the money. If you're yeah. self-employed, you have to file the tax and all that. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so imagine if I came to your house to collect tax from you. Are we going to have a good relationship? No. <laughs> I open the door anyway. We the door. <laughs> no, man. Well, you have to open the door because I have a... So, in let's say now, I have a British police or British army with me or something like that. You have to open the door. You don't have a choice. If, if you don't let me in, somebody else will come into your house by force later on. So, you don't have a choice. Fear yeah. will make you come in. But... You know, me and you would not have a very good relationship. So yeah, we wouldn't be friends. You know, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that's the thing. Is so you can see why they're hated. Is you know, paying tax now is very impersonal for us. But then it's a very personal thing. I'm coming to your house, your farmland, to take this tax, and if you don't pay, somebody else will come do it by force later. So oh my gosh. That's it. so that's that's the tension that exists. So I um for so if you if you look at the Zacchaeus the Zacchaeus story in after Zacchaeus' story in the book of Luke, Jesus then tells the parable of the what we call the parable of the talents. Jesus is is kind of using this to tell Zacchaeus that yo. Zacchaeus says, oh, 
how everybody that I owe, I will pay how many times back and all that stuff and all that stuff. And everybody that have cheated. He has cheated a lot of people, obviously. But Jesus is, then uses this whole thing to tell him, yeah, you pay all these people back, but remember, you have somebody else to answer to. Right? So even the top boss has to answer to Rome. And even the boss, the ones at the, the ones, the tax collectors at the bottom have to answer to their um, boss tax collector. So there's always somebody coming for their money. Right? Mm. So there you go. So you don't, you know, going doing the right thing in this world has consequences. Um, I think we Sometimes we need to. I think these days, That's um, real talk. Mm -hmm. I think is it something that needs to be thought properly because a lot of times these days I see a lot of people they want to protest and they want to stand up for what they believe in, <laughs> but they don't want to face the consequences of it. What do you mean? You understand? <laughs> people want to do whatever they want to do, right? They don't <laughs> believe in this. They don't believe. It doesn't matter. Something sometimes it's good. Some people are standing up for the right thing, standing up for what they believe in. But when the consequences come, they start complaining. <laughs> consequences. But that's life. When you stand up for the right thing, or when you stand up for what whether you believe like that. in that goes <laughs> against the grain, whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing, whether it go, mm. when it goes against the grain of where society is going, you're going to face consequences. Yeah, right? Like that. Mm. You know, and people forget, when people talk about, talk about all this, let's talk about the civil rights leaders, because... You know, I've, I've I've read a lot of their stories, but when we talk about um, Martin Luther King, a lot of the part of his speeches that doesn't get quoted a lot is when he says, "Look, I know that what I'm doing means I'm going to go to jail. It means that I'm going to be locked up, but that's a price I'm willing to pay." He always warned the people that we are doing what we're doing, but it's a price to be paid for what we're doing. Mm. And they went to jail. They got locked up. They got fine they got harassed there's always consequences to what you do when uh uh when muhammad ali decided not to he was drafted to go and fight the war in vietnam but he said no we don't fight war i don't do war right when he decided to refuse that and refused oh, wow. and decided not to go fight in that war he was stripped of his uh, titles and he was his boxing license was taken. So his source of income was taken away from him and he was thrown in jail. There are consequences. So today, young people, I would say young people or people of our generation, they just want to stand up and they want people to praise them for it yeah. <laughs> because I'm taking a stand. So praise me for taking a stand. No, it doesn't work like that. So you go to Bristol and knock down the statue and you want to be celebrated. <laughs> Yes, the statues of a slave trader. And I, I'm, I'm totally with you. There should not be statues of slave traders around. I agree. But there are consequences. Do you understand? There are consequences to doing that. We're not yeah. just going to praise you. You understand? The land is not just going to praise you. And that's yeah. what uh, Jesus kind of tells. That's part of the story, the parable. You're not just going to get praised for trying to do, stand up for what you believe in and stand up for what, even do if you, it's right. Right? Do you, People are not just going to praise you for it. Do you think it's it could be herd mentality then? Because like what you said is actually so when my sister graduated, her um I don't know the person who gives the speech or whatever one of the women she said something about yeah. like okay so you young people now like when you go you can now you're kind of like now free so if you want to go and protest don't ask for permission just go and protest. But for what I'm getting from it is like a lot of the stuff that. I, at least I see on social media, it can be a bit of head mentality because one group or small group of people can start it off with a good intention. Then you get the mass people just joining in, but you got those people who are like making it bad for that group. I don't know how to say it, but I'm yeah. I'm using the example of the um, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. Not many people know specifically about the law or stuff like that, but a lot of people just um, jump on the bandwagon and it just made it just like too much like in yeah, my opinion I, I i i just thought that was a stupid <laughs> a waste of everybody's i don't know what that was i didn't bother to read any of yeah. the stories i don't i don't really I was, care i don't I was, care I was about <laughs> i was fascinated I with a lot of stuff, 
yeah but it was just it's, yeah. a, it's, an, it's an example where people were just literally just doing the most yeah yeah think, yeah. yeah people but jump yeah, in and they uh, but and they, but you they, know they, Emirates, yeah there's mm-hmm. also like strength in numbers right so this is where i have a, a, a like a, com- a problem with this thing like we want to do right like if we, if i want let's say i want to do something right or whatever and it'll be hard to be listened to if it's just you on your own or a small group of people exactly exactly like, now think yeah. about it remember what we talked about last week let me just show you some remember what we talked about last week remember the stories that are all the stories that are always that are found in all the gospels Mm. read and study those in detail the gospel of john okay. almost very little there is in the other three gospels mm. the temple the story of the temple is in all four gospels mm. it's very important in the things that lead to 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 obviously how the plot to to, uh, to kill jesus but well as we said jesus is not recorded as a miracle jesus goes there with the people that's how he's able. Mm. The, the temple is not just a religious building; it is mm. an econ, you know, it is a religious, economic, political, and judicial building, right? That's where the mm. Sanhedrin Council sits to uh, to judge cases and and you know decide on different things. That's where the high priest sits, right? Mm. <clears throat> this is where the people come to worship and do their religious rites. This is has economic thing because of you know. They, you know, they've kind of instituted instituted it into the economy of the system. So, for you to be able to shut this kind of building down, all of you need to go together. So, mm. power. A lot of times, power power is not just in one person. You know, mm. there's a thing like you know one you know one person can go alone, but you know, a group of people can go farther. You know, if you, you if you go alone, you go faster, but if you go together, you you go further, right? So there is, there is a lot that we can do together. This is one of the things that I like about, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not trying to talk about any, what anybody believes or doesn't believe. That I guess that's not the point today. But I, I always, one of the things that I always point out to people is that look at all the gains the LGBT community have made in terms of the laws of this land. <clears throat> they, they, within a, you know, if you compare that to the laws, the gains mm-hmm. that black people have made over generations, mm-hmm. you know, right? If, if you go on TV anywhere, actually, look mm-hmm. at Testic Reddit, for example. I don't know if you guys know this restaurant chain mm-hmm. called Chick fil A, mm-hmm. right? Chick fil A, yeah, yeah. owners of Chick fil A said some things about uh, that anti mm, LGBT. Yeah. I think they supported them, yeah. they supported them. Um, um gay gay they did not support the gay marriage they i think funded, or something like that no oh, no no oh. they funded gay the gay conversion therapy oh right okay well they supported a group affiliated with gay conversion therapy i, I think so i'm i'm not 100 right on this so right yeah so lgbt people have marked these guys yeah we're gonna we you know, understand so yeah. when those guys got the a place in um in the oracle in Reading, yeah, they got there was protest down. outside the oracle every single day. Mm. Till the oracle announced that it will not renew the lease of Chick Fil A. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, LGBT they they've come together and they have like they have groups that support each other <laughs> and they Trust come me. together and and mm. different groups of people. Let me even you know. Do you want different groups of people and communities support each other? You know, if you say stuff against the Jewish community, they will come for you and they'll, they'll you know. But here's the thing: if a business comes up today and says we are not going to we are not going to serve black people, mm. right? Mm. Now, if I go there and they serve me, I will use it as a form of status that this business doesn't serve black people, but they serve me. So I'm a different kind of black person than you. Do you understand? Uh, mm. That's what we do, right? Mm. That's what we do. So we, and not just that, even as Christians as well, and people from, we, if we want yeah. to be able to make changes in this world, we need to be united. So this is why whenever you see divisions, even inside the church, about things that don't matter, you know, we, 
we get we unite over silly things about things <laughs> that we've not thought through but we, yeah. we are divided over things that are actually important to all important. of us mm. right so we can say we stand up for this but when it comes for one christian to profit of it they mm. will go and do that in secret and, and leave the group of people yeah. this yeah. is how we've gone to where we are now we are divided on every single sure. thing mm. and that division with that division we cannot achieve anything it's very easy for them to 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 break to break okay. us so if, if you go back and look at um world world war ii you right there were groups of christians trying to get favor from from hitler right they were trying to get hitler to identify with this side of the faction and that side of the faction and they were fighting each other do you understand in in i'm talking in the, in the german uh christian scene right hitler didn't oh. really care about them he just wanted to use them Right, Hitler didn't care about Christianity; he just wanted to use them. But they were falling over themselves, and then they kind of gave, uh, you know, Christianity was really big in Germany at this point. So they kind of gave uh, Hitler legitimacy uh. because of their own personal goals at the top. <laughs> so all all these sort of things, we we need to be focused on being understanding, obviously understanding what the Christianity is about in the first place. And then being united rather than fighting each other and and uh you know which is kind of like usually the focus of what we do just fight 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 yeah and break up. yeah yeah oh, so yeah. it's really frustrating my my huge thing or like what you mentioned that's a good example about the lgbt community because it's like uh, from my, my personal opinion um a lot of these groups when they form we have like a lot of media we all know that we get influenced or well, i'm trying not to to get influenced by media and things like that so it's almost like if you can't even literally go talk to someone and say something because they'll be like oh this is offensive to us like and people like people who are not even part of that specific group will just back mm. them up sort of thing and it's, it's for me it's a lot of like head i use that word again head mentality that makes it very difficult to uh, almost like to <laughs> to show your own opinion without actually saying your opinion so we have to like tolerate yeah things. i mean but but here's the thing though um i mean we kind of talked about this a little bit because mm. um you, the, the head um Kind of um, following the crowd or head head opinion or stuff like that is actually common for every single one of us, whether we want to admit it or not. There's always a thing because here's the thing: you cannot, not not all of us have enough time to think through. One of the problems that we have, we don't have enough time to think through every single thing. <laughs> so imagine if you had to be skeptical and have your own thoughts about every single thing. You will not be able to trust anybody or anything. And you will not be able to do anything, right? So we have to be able to um, trust that. And I, I suppose that's one of the problems we have in our world today. Like, who can you trust? Can I trust people in my church? Can I trust my doctor? Can I trust my lawyer? Can I trust? Can I trust the people I call friends? Can I? Who can I trust? Right. So human beings, we we are we are built to be able to like, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna follow like this because people what the problem is like again one of the things we have in in the church is like we have a uh we've kind of been taught to follow um um uh you know all these kind of leaders who have their own interest at heart and lead people down the wrong paths they've not bothered to understand oh, right. you know yeah. what's going on and stuff like that mm -hmm. and and this was was the was the theme right so yeah it is the head you had um understanding or whatever the, the followers they are important for one for for some in in some aspects of life but at least we we need to think through some things i suppose is where do you draw the line on what you think about and what you don't think about right yeah yeah, yeah. Where, where do i draw the line I on agree. where i have my own thoughts and where i don't have where my I own do. thoughts yeah yeah um, Gets on my nerves, sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating, but individualism you know. is like it's not, yeah, it's barely a thing nowadays. Like, and if it is, it's usually for the wrong, <laughs> wrong reasons. I, I, I actually think the opposite. I think individualism is too much these days. So that's what I mean by it. like, it's, if it is, it's for the wrong thing. I, I, I couldn't put it yeah. in a way, but yeah, I go, what you mean, but we're, yeah. we're too. We're, we're we're too individual is we're too individualistic today them, uh, them. <laughs> yeah. we, we need to have we need to be a community we need to be people together yes. right yes. jesus came and he formed community as well with the disciples and everything that came with that yeah. the disciples whenever they went out they formed communities paul wherever he went out he formed communities not individuals he doesn't write well mm. he does write to uh, Philemon, but okay, that's a different oh, thing. Yeah. But he writes to communities of people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. To the Ephesians, to the Corinthians, you know, communities mm -hmm. of people. This is how things, this is how we change the world, not through, uh, you know, this whole idea of almost elevating. I yeah. mean, it's not wrong. Mean. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's like the, the focus is my personal relationship with God is yeah. more important than our relationship to with god mm -hmm. do you understand i get you there's a community relationship with god there's a community reading of the bible there's a community understanding there's a community that needs to be formed there but it's kind of broken down a bit because mm -hmm. you know everything is individual somebody is at home uh my mm -hmm. spiritual time and my under you know people say my understanding of scripture what do you mean your understanding of scripture did you mm. what did you write? Your understand people have been reading the Bible for over 2000, well, god knows how many years now, and somebody comes with my understanding. Who what are don't you reckon? What do you reckon? Some people still struggle with that aspect of like you know, you have to pray for the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, so they have to. I feel like they have to say my understanding of it just to no, but uh, here's the thing though, <laughs> sure. here's the thing though, mm -hmm. here's the thing though, yes, just think about this. People have been reading scripture, writing about it for thousands of years. Thousands sure. of years. What is it that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you that hasn't been written down? <laughs> Preach. Do you that. understand? Oh. Just you, just you, just you in your room. It will reveal to you that nobody else in the history of this world has thought about. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? <laughs> now, yes, you can you can apply it to your life in a way. It can open your life. It can open yeah. an understanding to see something, right? <laughs> but it is, you know, the Holy Spirit, I, you know, I, I stole this from someone, but the Holy Spirit is not scared of a book. <laughs> Read a book. Read. Mm. Lots of people have done, yeah. the, Jesus, God has inspired people to do so much amazing work to help us understand this Bible and this scripture, That's right? That's true, definitely. And, you know, so you go ahead, go ahead, read, try and use it to help yourself. And you can get interpretations or understandings that fit to the context that you are involved in. <laughs> I'm not saying that's not possible, you understand? But mm -hmm. it's not like your, you know, my interpretation of this scripture. <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But that 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 kind of feeds into the um you know this this whole movement that that kind of swept across the world um over the last few years is my truth exactly oh, yeah. as opposed to the truth yes yeah, yeah. yes yeah. Okay. like like the truth is subjective rather than object yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The truth is the truth is subjective mm. rather than yeah. objective. Yeah. But don't you think what you are you relating that to um the Bible? Like the like people who well, read yeah, the Bible. Because somebody say, because, yeah. because there's many people. Both Christians and non Christians. All of us do it, sorry. Yeah. Um, but in but in the context of um what we're talking about just now, you know, what the whole is my interpretation of the of of the Oh right. Right, people, right, right. You know, <laughs> Two, two different people read the same scripture and mm. their interpretations are in are in direct conflict with each other mm. oh, okay you know what i mean or like yeah um, yeah during like for instance back in saint in um back home in saint vincent where i'm from yeah they'll be like during election times for instance there's one 
um, group of Christians that's back in one political party, another group of Christians back in another political party. Oh. And they're all using scripture to justify their own beliefs oh, wow. or behaviors and stuff. Oh. But they're supposed to be one body following yeah. Christ. Have one they're, understanding. They're, they're attacking each other online. They're having massive big arguments and conflicts and everything and all <laughs> using scripture. Oh, you know? And it's like, how are you interpreting scripture yeah. in a way that pits me? We're both Christians against you, yeah. Scripture, but my interpretation is pitting me direct in direct conflict with you. To and you. we're both supposed yeah. to be Christians. That's so like, yeah. like studying is so important, though, isn't it? Like an understanding yeah. the context of what the scripture is actually saying, because sometimes yeah. you can just read the scripture and just be like, okay, all of what I need is from that thing. But unless you actually study it. Yeah, it's, it's it down yeah. that, that's where your own interpretation comes from. Yeah, but then can I just say, let me be honest, if we didn't have things like the DC Unplugged forum and all them stuff, like how would we even know where to start in terms of like, but then even like, you know, um, one of the Bibles, an that open mind. Speak, one of the Bibles that Aaron's mentioned before. Um, the blue letter Bible that's brilliant. Like, oh, yeah, I didn't even know about that. But as soon as Aaron mentioned it and I downloaded the app and stuff, like, it literally mm. the study is just amazing, it's quite deep in depth, it's deep. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. even if we, I mean, we thank God that we do have unplugged, you know what I mean? But even if, yeah, we did, for sure, it's it's still the there's thing, tons of resources. Actually, there's t- exactly, there's tons of resources, and it's being mm. like you know proactive go and study like don't just for example sit under certain teaching and just take it for what it is go and do the research yourself as well what would you say to people what would you say then Mm -hmm. to um, people um who like they like it feels like it's they don't want to question like i don't know how to say it but I would say what we're doing is not, we're, it's not just questioning us. Like we're trying to get a deeper, like pull, like get how to build it into your own routine. Like how to, because I've I I recently had a, this revelation. I was like, you know what? If church shouldn't be like the place where I go to get my daily, or my, my not daily, my <laughs> reading. You know, it should be that it's like a supplementation. So when I go there, I should have already read it and then come there with my own thingy so so but some people will think like oh um if i go and do my own research i'll be questioning things and da, 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 so like how would you why do we think it's wrong to ask questions i don't understand why we think it's wrong to ask questions but you know some people Where might come from yeah some people might think like obviously um they feel more comfortable with just reading um what's there like and then understand like taking that at the surface but rather than like going into too much like discussion so, about it or something you know so yeah. okay so here yeah. more traditional and God. Cultural sense of we were told yeah. and our parents were told don't ask questions because they didn't understand yeah. and even going back to slavery i think where you just weren't allowed because it was being used incorrectly to keep you in that mindset yeah. so that, oh don't question this is just how it is yeah but we're not in that state anymore i think we yeah. we have access to information but i think the sense of don't question this in terms of authority respect cultural probably still seeps into the way we see and view the bible yeah, but, yeah. Like, but even but, even so i wouldn't say we're even entirely questioning i think it's more of like drawing a discussion like in terms of like yeah, do you understand yeah. this yeah yeah, yeah. Like but but uh, one one thing I, I will one one thing I will say though is in terms of when you say that um you know should the should the the source of of your reading and your interpretation should that always come from you should not be dependent on the church for that. I, so I I I agree and disagree with that way of thinking. In two, in two ways. Number one, mainly because th- these things were written to be read as a group within your community. So it, it isn't really speaking to individuals per se, it's speaking to people. 
groups of people, oh, community yeah. of Christians that speak, you know, especially the new, the new Testament is speaking to a community of people. So read in groups, I think like, again, this is now coming with a different understanding of things, but when you, when we read it in groups, we yeah. kind of get a, a setting of, com, of, of bringing different flavors of things because the Bible has layers. The way they've written these mm. things is, is you can never get everything from the first time. But mm. this group of people who are in our meeting, they will see something and they will ask a question that would take us down a different path that we could not think of when we read it ourselves. Yeah. Right? No, but what so, I was, yeah. What so, we're so saying, that, what, okay, you finish. Sorry. You finish. So what I'm trying to say, sorry, I'm not trying. What I'm trying to say is like, there, there is a place where our main source of understanding is in that group or that mm. community that we have as Christians, right? Not so. While it's also important to read on your own, right? But it, remember, a large um, swathes of Christianity, there was nobody. They never had the opportunity. Yeah. Actually, just think about this: a large part of the early Christians and generations of Christians never had the opportunity to say personal Bible. There was no such thing. Right, they read it when they came together in their house churches, their you know, different things like that. Nobody had the Bible on their own, so they depended on that interpretation when they came together as a group to read things. Right, we are the generation that have personal Bibles, but we are the generation that understand the Bible the least. That, that, okay, that's what I was trying to say. Do you, do I you guess, understand? I agree so, with you, Aaron. But what now, I'm saying now, is, okay, okay. I, I have to say this. This is very important to say. So just okay. to, um, so the, where we've got the the way things have come to where we are now hasn't happened just by mistake. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like for example, the within the the Catholic Church, the source of interpretation of the Bible is the Church. So whatever way the Church tells you to interpret the Bible, that's the oh, way you interpret it. Interpret it. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. church tradition is so. Don't tell me the Holy Spirit led you this way. No, nope. yeah. church tradition. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, if you see through the history, yeah, church tradition, there have been a lot of corrupt people yeah. who had their own interests, mm -hmm. who have interpreted things to benefit. So they were, you know, one of the biggest things that led to um, Martin Luther, right? The yeah. You know, and his whole thesis and everything that led to the Reformation and all that stuff. One of the things that led to it was, uh, you know, the, the Pope trying to get people to pay. Um, uh, what's this thing called? So, it, so it's something when you pay this money and when you it will secure your place in heaven. So even though you're a bad person or you're going to hell, but you will go to purgatory and, you know, you only be in purgatory for a year. And because you've paid this money, you pay for your sins in purgatory and then you go to heaven. So there's a name that it was called. So this this was raining and they were selling it all over the place. And this is based off uh, corrupt interpretation of teaching so that they can make money from it. Mm. And a lot of that, you can see that happening a lot today in different churches where people follow a pastor who is giving them an incorrect interpretation of, of things mm -hmm. okay. and nobody wants to see. So we're not saying go to church. It was never, and even from the Jewish tradition, it's never go to church and listen to the person in front talking and take their interpretation. Mm -hmm. It's go to church. We read together. We bring questions. We ask, why is this like this? What does this mean? Oh. And we don't just... Away. So we don't just leave it there. Yeah, it's a different thing, right? We go away yeah. and we think. Remember, the uh, Psalm says, Psalm um, one says, like the, the ideal Bible reader is the one who studies it, who meditates on it, not study, oh, yeah, not yeah, read yeah. it, meditates on it there. And I say, you go there, you guys read together. It's ah. still in your brain. And look, look at the interaction Jesus has with his disciples. People are coming mm -hmm. up to him asking questions. Well, why did you say this? And why did you say that? Uh, He's the rabbi, right? He can teach, but questioning is part of it so that we understand. Mm 
right? So okay. all together. So he's not just saying, let's go to okay. church, let somebody read the Bible to me and tell me what to think about it. No, no, no it's not like that. We go to you church, we opinion. read the Bible together. We can come with our own Bible, but we all read it together. Yeah. And then, right, then when we go back, we can meditate. Oh no, why why is this like this? Okay, we can go and do our own research. We come back. Okay, I, I read this the other day. Can, let's talk about it. Okay, yeah. the person who is leading the conversation might say, you know what? I actually haven't heard that, but let me let's let's think about it. And you know, that's those are the things that that you know sharpen us up together. And, yeah. So you can disagree with people, but it doesn't mean that the disagreement will will you know actually god i'm dra this is dragging on now but sorry actually in the bible if you go and read acts chapter 16 there's a big disagreement in the bible and that's probably something that we we don't have time to go through at the beginning of matthew in the bible some of the disciples and some of the brothers of jesus they believe they believe that christianity is only for the jews and let's focus on getting the jews to understand christianity while people like paul and the other side they believe that no this is for others this is not just for the jews we are going to take this message to the whole world so there's mm. a conflict and they come together and they debate mm. right and mm. in the debate here's the thing as well that's quite weird in the debates in acts chapter 16 where you go and read that nobody in that debate says guys let's open the bible and see what the bible says uh, <laughs> it's quite weird. We actually come together, and, so it's called the, the Jerusalem Council. So if you get the point, I I think I hope I'm right in in this. Let me just make sure. Okay. Let me make sure I'm, I'm giving the right verse. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. So it's Acts 15, not Acts 16. So it's in Acts chapter 15. Mm. So this is where they come, to, and when they have this conversation, then they agree that, okay, Paul, you can go about, we can go about the world greeting, preaching. Oh, uh, to, the, to the world. You can go about spreading this gospel to the world. So we, so some of us will be here trying to get the Jews on our side. You guys go and, you know, spread the message, yeah. but they go both come into agreement. But they said total disagreement of how they understood um, the work and you know scripture and everything. Mm. So, you know, Arams, yeah, I'm swayed. I'm like in that bit now. The way you explained how <laughs> church actually was <laughs> in terms of the oral discussion makes sense. Yes, and I agree <laughs> with it because my original yeah, yeah. So point just... was yeah different. Yeah, it was different. I was singing it in terms of like reading the because certain stories they'll bring up from the Bible that I don't know about and I haven't read about and then I have to sit there and try and understand what it, with the link and stuff. But yeah, what you've said makes sense. Like yeah, having but, like church. yeah, like uh, Catholic yeah. in uh, in Catholic circles they have like um, classes where they you know they start teaching oh, people Bible and you have those. At least most, I love that was that's part of Catholic tradition. I don't know if I've not attended a Catholic yeah. church since I was a child, so okay. I don't know if they still. Well, I, what am I saying? I attended one back when I first came to Reading. I used to go to Catholic church in. Oh yeah, I think the church was Catholic. Yeah, it was Catholic. <laughs> it probably yeah it probably was. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but that's that's the thing. It, it is baked into these days. A lot of churches are. Pentecostal churches are almost pushing it to the side, but no, that's that's part of how things should be. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. I think at least, like, if a lot of Christians have adopted this uh, preacher Sunday mentality, and then the rest of it, yeah, for actually people learning and thinking and questioning, yeah, and understanding is just not as prevalent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, yeah. it is part of the herd mentality you were talking about. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. no better because the head mentality is, is not not in Christianity. You can have head mentality in a lot of of things. I mean, you can have head mentality in Christianity, but after you've thought things through, right. you know. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, there's 
It if you let me talk, and I'll bring. I'm, I'm already thinking about another example, but Wait, let's so we, we, we need to have a we need to have an unplugged discussion day <laughs> just to discuss. Every unplugged is a discussion day. <laughs> but you know what I mean, like more, <laughs> like a longer, <laughs> longer discussion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Any more questions? Um, what question did I have? Uh, this is just deep stuff, man. And it's just, it's good that we're actually having the discussion and it's a blessing that we can do it on this platform as well so that people can actually watch and and, and grow yeah. as well. It's, it's so, so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a question about, what? sorry, really quickly. Uh, so we talked about the tax collectors, talked about mm -hmm. the Roman... Romans and what their rule was, but the whole Greek thing, what, where, where do they end, or do they not? They don't. Not, they do not end. I don't get the Greek influence. Oh, the the, the, the Romans kick them out. Oh. So every every empire that comes kicks out the next one. Oh right, okay, I get it. There was an empire. Okay. So Sorry. the Assyrians. They come through the Babylonians, kick them out. The Persians kick out the Babylonians. The Greeks uh, take uh, over from the Persians. Well, these guys kind of extend power in Israel for themselves, while the Romans kick out the Greeks. Out. Right. Okay. Did we talk about the zealots as well? What zealots? Oh, no. Um, no, 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 the they are, they are they are just a small group of people who want to use violence okay. to overthrow the Romans. So one of okay. Jesus's disciples, I think, it's Simon the Zealot. Is it Simon or Jesus? Oh, Simon? Simon. Okay. One of Jesus's disciples is part of that group. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's it. So is this the the foundation then? This is the whole uh like the um for the gospel, the different people. No, there's more. There's way more. more. <laughs> this okay. is just the this is just the pretext to oh, understanding wow. who the people you're reading about are. There's way more. So I actually recommend that they put I put a book recommendation on the WhatsApp group, which oh. is um some some professor kind of uh he writes the book and but the audiobook is good because it's just his lectures in the audiobook. So um I'll I'll, I'll repost it again. It's it's actually quite helpful. So that'll give you more there's way there's a lot there's way more look that's why i said that's the that's the point of this title <laughs> all music no noise there's so many elements people i think a lot of people don't understand how amazing or how much work these people put into the bible there's so much stuff inside of it especially in the gospels i'm just even for there's so much stuff inside of it you can never mm -hmm. read it too many times Mm. Every time you read, you will see something else. There's always something. So all we just want to do is um, get the tools so that when you read it, you come up, you see those things that they want you to see, all those things that they've buried in there, mm. right? So they remember last week we talked about how they've written a story, but they've put numbers into those stories that will also give a different, a deeper meaning about the story. Do you understand? Mm. You understand, like mm -hmm. you know, the feeding the five thousand. How the yeah. all the twelve, the, the the we ended up with twelve baskets at the end. Each disciple oh. had a basket, you know, like a you know, Jesus feeds the world and 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 then he gives the the disciples each a basket to go do the same to feed the world with the word. You understand, like there's a deeper deeper thing that is buried inside every story. So there's more and more and more of it. So we just want to get ourselves with the tools to be able to get all those different things that they've put inside, or at least as much of it as we can. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Can you please resend the I, thing? Sorry, Ellen. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will okay. resend it. Thank you. Right. Nice. Fantastic. Is it cool. the four portraits, one Jesus? Yes, four it's portraits, one. one Jesus. So it, it kind of gives you. Um, oh, thank a you. breakdown of each of the um, gospel writers it just gives you a bit more details and some tools to help you with how they wrote those books. Okay, thank you. Nice. Thank There's you very much. On the screen, so you guys oh, can see it. So. Thank you for portraits. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Four portraits. One, Jesus. 
Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so let's just uh, close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for to this evening. Thank you for this opportunity for us to come, study, and fellowship together as a group in your word. And we just pray that um, as we continue to study together, our eyes and our minds, our hearts will be open to an understanding, a deeper understanding of your word. And, you know, not just an understanding, but things that we'll be able to comprehend and apply into mm. our lives and the way we treat each other, the way we we relate to each other and the way we have effects in our community. Yes. Let your name alone be glorified. Let's have an awesome weekend to your grace and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, so yeah, next unplug the next unplug is in two weeks. And that one there's a there's a different host and a different topic. Oh yeah. So that will be interesting. Don't worry. Well, you, you, all the information will come out in due time. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just and, and then, <laughs> after that one, there's uh, the next date clashes with convention. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, our next date, our date after that clashes with convention. Oh, so, convention is in July. Is in July. Convention is what the convention starts on the Friday, right? So, um, so people will be traveling on the Friday. The actual first day of um, of activities for convention is on the Saturday. Oh, okay. oh okay. Friday. Um, right. For instance, we'll be going down on Friday and doing all the setting up. So all the setting up yeah, yeah. Is on Friday, and then the Saturday is the first day of activities. Okay. Mm. So I, I want to, uh, we have a scheduled on blog for that Friday. So I, I guess. We, we we might give that one a miss so that everyone that's you know traveling can uh, go up. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. But okay. we'll have all those conversations in the group. All right. Have a okay. good evening, everyone. Sorry, before you go, before you go, before you go, before you go, everyone. Okay. Is, go is it is this live? Can you? Is it possible to cut the live and we're still here? Oh. Or... Okay. About is it? it? I'm just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? Yeah.